Hey guys, it's Traffleton. A while back, I was tasked to help a friend of mine set up his new gaming PC. And since he's mostly a single player gamer and was very reluctant to install Windows 11, it got me thinking, maybe I could try moving him to Linux. But then another thought was introduced into my mind was how am I going to get all of his games to work? So I wanted to revisit the fundamentals and focus on getting you in the fast lane and getting you caught up with using Steam on Linux. Valve has made a lot of changes to how this works over the last couple of years, but also a lot of optimizations to make this easier. So let's start with the big old question of what does it take to get started with gaming on Linux? I'm going to be talking about a lot of things today, but before we go any further, if you are, let's say, a Windows using user and you are considering buying a Steam Deck or something of the other, you should be aware of the sacrifice it means to be a Linux gamer, especially if you're going to be using that as your only means of gaming. An important thing to be aware of about Linux gaming is that there are some games you cannot play. Whether this is using Linux in the traditional sense on a desktop or laptop, or using one of the Linux handhelds, like say, the Steam Deck or a Lenovo Legion Go S. And I'm proud to report that if the majority of games that you play are single player games, you will have little to no issue playing them on Linux. And likewise, if you are considering playing games on other platforms, like the Epic Game Store or GOG, or emulating games or playing retro games, there's plenty of software to cover your needs. Now, one of the unfortunate parts about single-player gaming is DRM, and more specifically, AAA games with intrusive forms of DRM that can cause issues for you. And the best examples, both on Linux and Windows, are the EA and Ubisoft games, which deploy various types of copy protection. In the case of Ubisoft, they can be extra zealous about this by employing within the game executable virtual machine detection or layers of obfuscation to attempt to slow down pirates from cracking the games. It's either that or clients like Uplay or Origin will randomly break because they are not being built with Linux in mind. That's single player gaming, but there's also multiplayer games, and unfortunately, the majority of competitive games won't support Linux. This includes games like Call of Duty, Rainbow Six Siege, Fortnite, and many others. There have also been games like Apex Legends and League of Legends that used to work on Linux, but don't anymore. And the reason is that these games require you install a rootkit, I, I mean anti-cheat, in your computer. So you don't cheat when you play the games, even though cheaters know their ways around cheating programs. This isn't to say that all multiplayer games don't work on Linux. For example, Fall Guys works on Linux because they use a weakened version of Easy Anti-Cheat. And there's also outlier games like Warframe or Overwatch that employ their own brand of anti-cheat that works on Linux and doesn't require any intervention from the developers. Now, depending on the game studio, your mileage may vary, but if you are ever in doubt, an important site to check to see if your multiplayer games work is Are We Anti-Cheat Yet? which documents the status of games with anti-cheat and whether they work on Linux or not. It's important to remember that when you use Linux or a Linux handheld, you are locking yourself out from playing games that have these problems, short of using Windows anyway. And it's important that you know this going in because whether or not installing Linux is the best choice for you depends on the games that you play. Now, the situation isn't completely unknowable because you can go into the battle informed. A big website to remember is ProtonDB, which documents the work of many other Steam gamers on Linux have done to get games to work or if games are even working or not. Before buying and or playing a game, visit ProtonDB to prep for any particular issues and use it as a buyer's guide, especially if you have no interest in troubleshooting problems with your games. So disclaimer is out of the way, we've decided to make the plunge at installing Linux, or you buy a Linux handheld. And the first thing that we need to get into installing is Linux itself. I'm not going to get too much in the weeds here, but the distribution that you pick is incredibly important. As of writing this, the best 
Linux gaming distribution is Bazite. You don't have to think about updates, you don't have to use the terminal, you don't have to worry about your d computer deleting your desktop environment. It You just care about getting your games and keeping them working. But it's not only that. If you're using one of the Windows-based gaming handhelds, like for example the Asus ROG Ally, there is a high likelihood that Bazite will outperform Windows and integrate with the hardware better. <laughs> And if you're looking at Bazite Online, a trap that a lot of people I have noticed fall into is that it's really easy to think that it's only for the handheld gaming consoles. But Bazite has a desktop mode similar to SteamOS, and you can use Bazite like you would on a traditional computer. Now, an important thing to know too is with Bazite's desktop mode is there's two different interfaces to be aware of. Now you could opt for something similar to SteamOS and that's a desktop environment called KDE. It's actually completely identical to what you'd find on the Steam Deck. But you could also opt for something completely different and that's GNOME. And it's the default desktop environment on many Linux distributions. Now, I recommend starting with KDE because KDE is what's used in the Steam Deck, but in my personal experience, it occasionally suffers from some lack in polish in places. But in general, it does scaling really well, handles monitors great, and gets 99% of what you need to get done done. On the other hand, GNOME has been a personally better experience for me, but it comes with the trade-off of it doesn't handle some specific features better than KDE. <laughs> so really, it's pick and choose whichever one that works better for you. And if KDE doesn't work for you, try GNOME. If GNOME doesn't work for you, try KDE. And you can do all of this by running one terminal command from Bazite's installer page on their website, and just switch from KDE to GNOME or GNOME to KDE. It's that simple. Now with that all the way, let's get into Steam. The other reason I'm covering Bazite is Bazite comes with Steam pre-installed, and also some various under the hood utilities to get things like your controllers to work better, or optimizing performance as a whole. So after logging into Steam, the very first thing that you want to do is open the Steam settings, go to compatibility, and enable Steam compatibility for all games. Steam will prompt you to restart, and then you can install virtually any game in your library. Now, whether it works or not might be a different issue. And of course, this is why you should be prepared to troubleshoot if things go wrong. If there's a game that others might have an easy time playing, you might have a more difficult time playing it. And if you aren't prepared for troubleshoot, you could be in a situation where you aren't able to play the game that you want to play. Be sure to check Proton TV to see what other people have done and if the anti-cheat works or not. And if you're having problems, try some of the suggested solutions that you see there. Now Valve isn't the only game in town when it comes to custom versions of Proton. And if you want to use a different version of Proton, you have to use a program called Proton Up QT. And it's basically a manager for installing and managing custom Protons and custom Proton versions and supporting more games outside of what Valve will officially support. And to use ProtonUp QT, ProtonUp QT automatically detects other Linux game launchers that you have, including Steam. So if you select Steam and select Add a New Version, from here you can download the desired Proton version that you want to use, the default being Proton GE, and you can install it when prompted. Unfortunately, Proton Up QT does need to be manually updated, and since SteamOS and Bazite give you no notification of when things need to be updated, you should do your due diligence and check back in every now and again if you have a problem launching a game. But custom variants of Proton aren't the only thing. Because when it comes to troubleshooting, another common thing that you will see on ProtonDB is launch options. And here, from ProtonDB, you are going to copy-paste what appears to be demon summoning variables that have worked for other people. And I'm going to try to break down a sample command for you. Do not use this command on every single game, but I think it's helpful to know the difference with what each of these commands do. Now. 
in this sample command here, the first thing to be aware of is overlay programs. And that's always going to be at the front. Overlay programs run on your native Linux system and often do specific things that are used to debug by people who try to get games to work. For example, in this sample command, Mango HUD is a program that you can use to track performance in an overlay. And But there's also a program called GameScope, which Valve uses to get things like HDR to work on Linux. And it can often fix how windows are drawn in games, especially older games. But while Bazite includes these things, you will need to make sure that your system is up to date and Proton is up to date, otherwise these overlays won't work or prevent games from launching, period. If you have no interest in counting the CPU usage or frame rate of your games, you should remove these from your launch arguments. Next, we get into environment variables, and that's everything that has an equal sign in it. And these are all pieces of commands that tweak Wine to do specific things. Now, the first thing we need to get into is eSync. Proton is normally configured to make games that are CPU bound to use what's called eSync, which forces games that are usually CPU bound to be multi-threaded or to use your GPU. Because even if these games weren't supposed to be using your GPU, they can be forced to and it can increase performance of your games. Now, some games don't handle this well, or you might have an older Intel or AMD CPU that makes this incompatible, so it needs to be disabled in these cases. But we also have fossilize and shader caching, and that's the, every command that says GL shader disk cache, and these are needed to control shader caching. Now, a trend in newer games is that on both Windows and Linux, Steam and games that use Steam need to load shaders so that you see things in 3D environments. And on Linux, Steam uses a program called Fossilize, which runs in the background when you launch a game and sometimes gives you a pop-up when you attempt to run the game, telling you that shaders are being processed. Now, in the majority of cases, you are able to safely skip this and you can play your game just fine because it doesn't necessarily mean that performance will be improved. However, you can get into weird edge case scenarios, like for example if you play Warframe, where all of these shaders need to be compiled ahead of time. And these shaders can be installed upwards of an extra 20 gigabytes in addition to the game that you play. And if you don't install these shaders, it can result in stuttering when you attempt to play said game. And I also included a little extra flag at the end, which is DXVK HUD, which shows an on-screen interface whenever shaders are being compiled by Steam's Fossilize, or they're com being compiled in the background by the game or background Windows services. But finally, we have to get into a more specific part. Now, if you're an AMD or an Intel user, you're going to skip to the time card on screen now. <laughs> But if you're an NVIDIA user, stick around, because you're quickly going to learn that NVIDIA is the boogeyman of stuff not working on Linux. There's a reason why when you install Bazite, they tell you that you cannot use the console-esque Steam Deck Big Picture mode if you are an NVIDIA user, and it's because NVIDIA often has problems working on Linux. Now, over the last couple years, this actually hasn't been that bad. But for some games, this might prove problematic for you. For example, if you play a game like Batman Arkham Knight, you're going to need to add specific launch options to enable specific NVIDIA features. Let's say you want that sweet, sweet reflective rain or the real-time hair rendering in The Witcher 3. You're going to need to have extra variables so that they can see your NVIDIA GPU. And it also allows Proton to directly interact with your NVIDIA GPU so you can get all of your ray tracing and all the stuff that people want out of their modern video games. That's all of the environment variables, but we have one last thing to get into, and that's launch arguments. Every one of these launch arguments and launch options will have an extra command at the end, which is percent command percent. And this is a placeholder that Valve uses to represent your game. And it's almost always followed by what's called a launch argument. But it's also very useful if you would like to bypass game launchers 
or skip intro screen so you don't have to wait to be told that your game is developed by a studio in Montreal and the game might give you seizures or they show you logos or things you might not know and it could be very annoying to see every time you boot up your game. All of this being said, I'm sure you should be able to do everything you can now to get your games working as best as possible on Linux. As always, be sure to check ProtonDB to see if your game works, and if it's a multiplayer game, check Are We Anti-Cheat Yet? Afterwards, go to Steam's launch options and configure the launch options to do things that might make your game run easier, or install a custom Proton version. Now, in the majority of cases, this will fix almost all of your games. Now, there's almost always going to be edge cases, but if you're following a video like this, you're probably not going to be one of those edge cases. But I also think that it's important to bring up that you are not locked into just Steam if you need to play games that aren't on Steam. If you want to play games on Epic Games or GOG or Uplay, that is all available to you, but you are going to have to install another game launcher. Things like Heroic, Retroarch, uh, Bottles, you're going to have to learn all of it. But am I going to cover it here? Heck no, this video's been too long already. If you're going to want to hear about all of that, I'm going to ask you to leave a like on this video. Leave a like on this video if you like essentially hacking to get all of your games to work. Oh, by the way, this is also the time of the video where I tell you to visit my website. If you visit trapleton.com, you can find a transcript of everything I have said here. If you are not interested in scrubbing through a video, you can always just read my videos instead. <laughs> And as always, if you want to donate me money through Patreon or YouTube memberships, it is always appreciated. Hang on, just, just a minute. I have a list of all my YouTube members. Okay, so we have a super chat from George Castro. Can't believe he gave me $10. Oh my gosh, George, I, I'm, I love you, but you, you didn't have to do this. I, I, I love I, I, I am a shill for I'm a shill for all universal blue things and uh, we also have YouTube member Capsy for tier one Thank you so much for donating me money uh, Maybe I should do this more often Maybe you would actually give me money and I wouldn't be bank uh, if you would like to see more about Linux gaming in the future stay subscribed There might be more out there for you or just solving the dumb things that I come up with when I use computers All right so, thank you for watching, I will see all of you next time, and have a great rest of your week.